Welcome everyone. If, if you guys can sit a little bit, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. Or if you can put the SSI next time like this, it would be nice. It is nice to see people when you speak. You know, nice to see a reciprocation. Thank you so much. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Vivim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayet Nashta Prayeshva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki I'm just going to read translation of these two verses. Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the Personality of Godhead, Narayan, unto Nara Narayana Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam, and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome in the heart is almost completely destroyed and love and service unto the Personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as the irrevocable fact. Yeah. Repetition, mother of learning. <laughs> we repeat it every day. At some point, we will, you know, really uh, got the essence of these verses. Okay, today we're going to read from Srimad Bhagavatam 1. Chapter uh, Canto One, Chapter Nineteen, Text Number Fourteen. You got it right. Okay. Uh, 
Tasyaiva meghasya paravaresho Tasyaiva meghasya paravaresho Vyasakta chitasya grihishva bhikshnam Vyasakta chitasya grihishva bhikshnam Nirveda molo dvija shaparupo Nirveda molo dvija shaparupo Yatra prasakto bhayam ashudhate Yatra prasakto bhayam ashudhate Tasya eva me ghasya paravaresho Vyasakta chitasya grihishva bhikshnam Nirveda molo dvija shaparupo Yatra prasakto bhayam ashudhate You can chant. Tasya he is Eva certainly Me mine Ag Aghasya all the sinful Para transcendental Avara mundane Isha controller the supreme lord Vyasakta overtake overly attached Chitasya of the mind Griheshu to family affairs Abhikshnam always Nirveda Mula the source of detachment Dvijashapa cursing by the Brahmana Rupa form of Yatra whereupon Prasakta one who is affected Bhayam fearfulness Ashu very soon Dhate take place Okay, let's see. <laughs> if if I want to say in Sanskrit, controller, what would I say? The person, the Supreme Lord. <laughs> what about uh, one who is affected? Yes. What about overly attached? Mm -hmm. And to family affairs. Okay, good. <laughs> Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, we see Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the controller of both the transcendental and mundane worlds, has graciously overtaken me in the form of a Brahmana's curse. Due to my being too much attached to family life, the Lord 
in order to save me, has appeared before me in such a way that only out of fear I will detach myself from the world. Purport. Maharaj Parikshit, although born in a family of great devotees, the Pandavas, and although securely trained in transcendental attachment for the association of the Lord, still found the allurement of mundane family life so strong that he had to be detached by a plan of the Lord. Such direct action is taken by the Lord in the case of a special devotee. Maharaj Parikshit could understand this by the presence of the topmost transcendentalists in the universe. The Lord resides with his devotees and therefore the presence of the great saints indicated the presence of the Lord. The king therefore welcomed the presence of the great rishis as a mark of favor of the Supreme Lord. Omagyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Gena Tasmae Shi Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutali Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandiham Shi Guru Shi Yuta Padakamalam Shi Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sadivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Vitam Shah Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Damostuti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhi Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Pri Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sinduvya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This is actually a very nice chapter and we hear again and again about how amazing Maharaj Pariksha's example of how to act, how devotees act. And and um, so obviously what happened to Maharaj Parikshit. He was a great devotee of the Lord and he didn't deserve anything like that. If you, if you think in, in this way, right? Like great devotees don't really deserve big calamities. But they still come because we're in the material world and we cannot change anything. And there is two ways how to deal with that. There are two ways how to deal with that. The way how devotees are dealing and the way how non-devotees are dealing. Right? So, the position of a devotee, when all these calamities come, what Maharaj Pariksha did, he just accepted it. We heard from previous verses, from previous chapters, also that he was a very surrendered person. And after curse, he didn't say anything to retaliate, even though he could. He just accepted that. And which is more interesting, he accepted this, this as a mercy, as a grace of the Lord. And it's very interesting to see here that he still was attached to the family life, even though he was really great devotee, pure devotee of the Lord. He saw Krishna even before he was born. How fortunate is that? <laughs> Extremely amazing. But because he was a king, he had so many worldly duties and so many mundane duties, what he had to perform, uh, he became attached. 
he became attached to um, to his family and to the, his kingdom. Everything was what he had. But then, um, all the time in devotee's life, tests will come. Maharaj Parikshit saw it as a test. He, it's really amazing also uh, to see how Maharaj Parikshit, he uh, could recognize that it is Maya. He was attached and he realized it was my attachment. And he could clearly realize here in this verse that actually um, Krishna, you know, the Supreme Lord, he does it to me just to uh, help me to get rid of these material attachments. Otherwise, it's impossible. Like only by the mercy of the Lord, we are able to do that. And so this is really great difference between how devotee acts, how devotee thinks, and how non-devotee thinks. And when different problems come to your life, you can really, you can really see your advancement. <laughs> what are you taking shelter of, right? Many people. Uh, usually non-devotees, even though they believe in God and they uh, pray sometimes when the calamities come, they try to find um, solutions on the material plane, whether it's money or relationships, some kind of different, uh, you know, people who they know, but not necessarily, they don't put their, all their faith in God. And devotees don't do like that. Devotees, whatever happens, good or bad, they see everything as a grace of the Lord. So um, devotees see it as a test. And it's really nice to know that when you pass this test, you, you will really advance in your spiritual life. And this is what is it for. When Krishna gives us this test, it says that you see he's a uh, controller of both the transcendental and mundane worlds. So he controls spiritual worlds, he can controls all material nature. And he knows everything was going on in devotee's life. And he gives us this test. And he wants us to act as a devotee. But as, as long as we don't act like that, we will we'll, we'll have this test. And even, well, test will always come, but uh, when devotees really advance in their knowledge, right, they don't see it as a test. It becomes a little bit more easier to pass over this test because they see it as just an opportunity to not waste their time. In the uh, case of Maharaj Parikshit, he had only seven days. And he realized right away that actually this is arrangement by the Lord and, um, to free me from all these material attachments. And what did he do? He sat on the bank of Ganges and dedicated all his life without even wasting his time to drink and to eat, just to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is a really, really amazing example how to deal with different things. Uh, it was mentioned in different classes that when um, difficulties come to our life, we try to kind of, you know, I don't want that. I don't want to go through that. You know, I don't want to deal with these difficulties. But the point, we, we're kind of missing the point if you do like that. Because all the difficulties are meant for our purification. And Krishna doesn't give something what we cannot really go through. He knows, it's, uh, you see it's also very interesting. I was thinking a lot how spiritual master treats different uh, disciples, right? And he knows the, you know, the potency, he knows uh, disciples' hearts. And it's very, very personal. So what he tells one person, he won't give that kind of instruction to another person. Because he knows that for one person it will be, uh, it will be good to do. But for other person, it can be a little bit discouraging if he tells something, you know, like, I don't know, memorize Bhagavad Gita, <laughs> right? One, one devotee, he can, you know, become really uh, discouraged if his spiritual master says like that. The same Krishna. Uh, he, he gives these custom-made difficulties for us. And usually when, 
you know, difficult, difficult situations come to us. We, um, not all of us, but there is a like, tendency to point on someone else. We, we try to find who is guilty in that, who to blame. But very interesting that when, you know, usually like, we, I'm not going to point at you, but I'm going to point here, <laughs> right? When you point in like that, for example, this person is uh, guilty in whatever happened to me, right? You, you can notice that only one finger is pointing to that person and three pointing at you. So it's really amazing that we have to really look um, inside our hearts what is going on because all the answers is in there because there is Krishna as Paramatma. He gives all the answers in all difficult situations. And in devotee's case, um, we see in Bhagavad Gita, who even used this verse yesterday uh, on book distribution, that Krishna takes care about, uh, of everyone. He takes care about everyone and he is not really partial. But he really takes care of his devotees, the one who chants the holy name. It can be explained as a uh, father has five kids, right? And the youngest one, he's really helpless. You know, he's the youngest one, what he can do. And father gives him much more affection and love. Even though he loves everyone equally, but because he is more helpless, he gives him more care. The same with, the, with devotees, because devotees, you, we can see that really advanced devotees, they really dedicate all their lives to do service. And Krishna does take care. Sometimes, you know, classical Hare Krishnas, right? Uh, brahmacharis don't work, right? Because it's not their thing, right? They dedicated their life to do, you know, to do much higher work. They still work, but not, not, not for money. And, but you see that uh, devotees eat very nicely, right? They sleep and, you know, they have uh, all, all nice facilities to, you know, to live. And where is it coming from? From Krishna, because Krishna takes care of the devotees. And it's a very nice example with the animals. You know, they don't do anything, but Krishna still takes care of them. They don't work, they don't bring money, right? But he takes care. It's a very nice example. My Guru Maharaj said, uh, he has this garden and he really observes so many things and there really amazing realizations. And there is period uh, from fall season to winter season. And usually at the time he goes to Kartik, to India for one month or one month and a half. So it's one period of time he's not in California. And when he comes back, he sees all these animals and he sees a squirrel. Right? And she has completely different coat. You know, when did she get it from? You know, when he was living, it was different coat. But when, you know, like fur. And yeah, they don't, they don't work for that. But Krishna gives them because he takes care of them. And devotees know about that. That's why um, they don't really, when they do any kind of service, they don't think that, okay, if I do that, uh, I'm going to get this from Krishna. Krishna will give me this and this and this. Because they know that ultimately Krishna will give whatever he wants to give. My job is just to do service. And just to do service. And actually the service is a really great thing which really helps to overcome any difficulties in your life. No matter what's going on, if you engage in service, you will pass through clear, pure, and, you know, happy. At some point, maybe not be happy, <laughs> but it's purification. <laughs> Eventually, everything will work out, because the service is what will save us. You seva will save you, what says in our family business. I don't like that. Um, Maharaj Parikshit, he was actually trained as a devotee. First of all, he saw Krishna himself in the womb, but also he was trained all his life as a devotee. But still, he found this attachment to the material world. I find it really amazing, because we try to cultivate so hard. 
you know, reading and chanting every day. But even that great personality, as Maharaj Parikshit, he found really this allurement in the material activities and material enjoyment, what to speak about us. So it really depends on our, on the mercy. We, can, we, we cannot do much. We can do our part, but ultimately it depends on Krishna's mercy. And um, let me see. It's also nicely said here that um, all the saintly people, uh, all the saintly persons, they came to really hear Srimad Bhagavatam, and it was indication that um, Supreme Lord is here, that Krishna was present there Himself, because Krishna, where devotees of Krishna, they are um, Krishna Himself. And I was listening to lecture of the Mal Krishna Goswami, and he said a very interesting thing. He said um, that that God is present whenever His name is chanted. And when we perform some kirtan, Krishna is actually present there. When we chant, when we distribute books, He, he Himself is present there. Lord Chaitanya, this is, he said, <laughs> I really want to believe in that. And he said that Lord Chaitanya is dancing with you, right in the middle of your Sankirtan party. It's really amazing. And then we said, but someone can ask, but I cannot see Lord Chaitanya dancing right next to me. And he said that we have to have glasses. Not like that. <laughs> I still cannot see Krishna. But the spiritual glasses. And the saintly people, the saintly uh, devotees who were who came to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. This is actually um, like a proof that by association with the advanced devotees, you know, we can learn from, they could see Krishna, they can see Krishna advanced devotees, but we cannot. So we have to really get this strength and vision from advanced senior devotees. And in this way, you want, at some point, you'll be also be able to transcend all your problems. And, you know, it's like when any kind of problems come, how association is important. You, 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 you're not supposed to really face it only by yourself. Because by yourself, it's very, very hard. We're dealing with so many different things, especially with the mind. It's not even on a gross level. On a gross level, you can, you know, at least do something, but when the problem in the mind, it's very, very hard to deal with that. And you, you, you're not even, you shouldn't actually stay just by yourself with your mind. You have to really take shelter of the devotees, of your mentors, always people who you trust, and they will help you to do that. Um, it mentions also nicely that how could, you know, where did Maharaj Parikshit got all his strength from this association? But, you know, he, he still, he was a king and he was attached to the um, worldly duties. But because of that association, he, he could be strong for all these seven days and listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, you know, just go back home, back to Godhead. You see? What else? I guess no visitors. <laughs> so, any? Do you have any thoughts on that? Any realizations? Any problems? No. So yeah, I'll just end that. You know, we have to really learn how to become devotees and don't be distracted by by different, even so-called difficulties, because when you see. Uh, everything is the mercy of Krishna, everything becomes very easy. And not waste time. Maharaj Parishan could do so many different things. He could go to Las Vegas, 
and spent all his time there. He didn't do that. The same with us. When we... Um, difficulties can be different types, right? Even on this mental platform. And it's very important to engage yourself. Even if you know that something bad will happen, right? It will happen anyway. You know, why, why you have to really like, care about this so much? And if you engage your senses in that uh, kind of expectation that something will happen, you won't be able to really sustain yourself, you know, because mind will go wild. But if you engage in service all the time, you, you just win win situation. And we will purify you. Okay. Thank you so much. Grantra Shin Bhagavatam ki? Shila Prabhupada ki? Go, Prima Nandi. Jai.